sunscreen on two hours ago. It is quite a, a mission, I have to say. Fun and games. Fun and games. I'm feeling refreshed, rejuvenated, and totally inspired. this video because you want to go on a backcountry hiking and camping experience then you are in the right place. <sighs> we are in the Arthurs Pass National Park in the South Island of New Zealand and I'm heading up to camp at the top of a place called Lagoon Saddle. The sun was shining before but the rain is imminent and um, the forecast is for snow. I've only brought a tarp with me. We're sleeping out under the tarp in the first snowfall of autumn and I'm really looking forward to it. I hope you guys are as well. I'll catch up with you soon. Right, well we're on the bush line and that's where we're heading. Somewhere over there towards the grey clouds and then just up there over the mountains in the distance you can see the rain coming. We're getting a southerly change. We're in the southern hemisphere which means a southerly change brings weather directly from Antarctica. Nothing between us and Antarctica. I'm walking in shorts at the moment. It's a bit mild. But the moment that southerly change hits, you can already see the snow up there. It's going to get really cold. It's going to be minus one degrees Celsius overnight, below freezing point. So that's going to be fun. something about this particular spot here it's just got this feeling of anticipation like we're about to come over the top of the hill and see something really beautiful I think that's because I'm expecting to see the tarn but all around us there's gorgeous mountains so the one behind us is Mount Bruce it's about 1600 meters high and then that one over there it's just called Mid Hill funny name for a mountain but anyway it's about 1,800 metres high. Hey, there it is. <sighs> so although the track goes along here, we actually don't want to follow that. Um, we want to get down there, camp somewhere down by the tarn. So we need to make our way down through this tussock. The only problem is I suspect it's going to be really boggy. The plan will be to stick as close to the vegetation, the trees as I can, because it's most likely that it's going to be driest alongside the trees. I'm actually going to, I'm going to sneak through here. Look at this. I'll cut down through the, the, the trees. Someone's been here before. That's probably a marker for uh, predator traps. Oh my gosh. This is just phenomenally beautiful. And <laughs> look at it. It's gorgeous. The main challenge is look at the bog. Okay, so here's what I think. There's a chance of some dry ground up there. And there is a chance of some dry ground up there. So I'm going to do a loop and see what we can find. Ah, oh, this is perfect. 
Yep, this is perfect. This is just what I was looking for. It's relatively flat. <laughs> um, relatively is good enough. Relatively is good enough. I don't know that I've ever had a tent spot that's been completely flat. So relatively flat will be good enough. What I really like about this spot is that it's got some protection. So at the moment, the wind is coming from this direction, which is northwest. It is blowing directly into camp. But I'm not so concerned about the weather now because it's daylight. And I can manage things in the daylight. What I'm concerned about is the weather overnight because the southerly change is going to bring a really cold snap. And although the rain, the wind is forecast to be heaviest now, when the southerly change comes, the wind will be coming from that direction through those trees. So this is perfect. We're going to get protection from any snow drift if it does snow and from the wind coming from the south overnight. The only place that the wind is not forecast to come from is directly that view over the tarn, which is perfect. That's exactly what I wanted, to have my tarp open facing towards the tarn. So I'm going to get it set up now and um, I'll tell you about it once it's done. I'll chat to you about this tarp set up once I'm done. I've only set it up once in my backyard. So wish me luck. Hopefully I don't muck it up too many times. Uh oh, a few drops of rain. Just as I spew everything out of the pack. Right. Laurel and Hardy show. I just can't get this right. I guess this is the point at which the weather shifts from round there from the north to the south. So I now have it billowing right inside the tarp. But as I said, during the daylight hours, you can cope with that. It's just that I can't get the design quite right. I've forgotten. I'm doing my best. Something is wrong here. I'm at a loss for what I've done wrong. You can feel so smart when you're in your back garden trying these things. Peg one corner, take the other corner, peg that out. Peg the third corner, second tie down from the end. Take the first corner, overlap it over by one metre, peg it to the side. <laughs> I've done something wrong and those of you who know how to set up the Donia tarp are going to be like crying out to me. But right now, I just have to... create my own design. Oh. Okay, what I'm going to do is go and hide in under the trees and think about my plan. I want to bring my stuff in from the rain as well. Well, this gives me a little bit of protection, which is nice. Ah. 
it's nice to try new things like new type con configurations but it's funny how when you get out into the real world and it's windy and cold and raining it can be really hard to remember these things and you got to know your limits so it's not a big deal to have a interesting tarp configuration I'm just going to go back to a good old standard one that I know and trust I'm tempted to make a cup of tea and just um, sit here under the trees until the wind dies down and shifts more around to the south because as it's moving around from the north to the south we are getting that easterly wind coming right into the tarp Heck. How are you supposed to get it off? I suppose you're supposed to put it like that. Alright. Now I know. It's tricky because if you put this lid on it, how do you get it off? I suppose like that. It's a bit dicky really, I think. Oh well. Could be me. Could just be me that's being the the dicky. We'll see. But this weather is no joke. It's freezing, bitterly freezing. So, can't really hear. I'm going to have this cup of tea, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to change into our long trousers. You can see how pink my skin is. I'm cold. Warm through my chest. I'm beautifully warm. My hands are cold, my legs are cold. I'm going to change into my long trousers. I'm going to put my rain pants over the top. I need to be serious and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a tarp set up and I'm not going to film it I'm just going to be quick and I'm going to get something set up the important thing is we've got some shelter and um, I can get inside it my plan to have the tarp opening out that direction is just not going to work I thought that would be the case when the weather was nice but we've got driving rain coming from that easterly direction and so even though that was the one direction I wasn't anticipating the weather to come from, it is coming from there. So hey, let's adapt. The brain does not think very well when it's stressed. And it's stressful when it's cold. So, um, I was just getting a little bit flustered with the tarp earlier on and really struggling to get a good configuration so now I'm going to get back to it the priority is going to be getting something up <laughs> even if it's not perfect but I would love something that's got enough of an opening so that we can have a little fire in front of it So when a New Zealander tells you that in the absence of um, in the absence of bears and cougars and snakes, the most dangerous thing in the outdoors is the weather, we're not kidding. We're not kidding. I mean, you guys were with me an hour ago. An hour ago.
ago we were coming over the top of the saddle. I was putting sunscreen on two hours ago and now it is bitterly cold. Okay, too much snow on the lens. Oh. It's actually really fun doing this. <laughs> I'm having so much fun. This is so cool. Ah. For a girl who lives at the coast, being in the mountains in the snow is so much fun. As long as you're warm and dry. Oh. It's snowing! It's snowing! <laughs> oh my gosh! I'm pretty sure I warned you I was going to be a bit crazy if it snowed. Oh. My fingers are a little bit cold. I took my gloves off because I actually don't want them getting wet. What I'm doing by putting these guy lines on is just creating a little bit more structure just to hold the tarp more securely. I have no idea what you call this setup. Let's just call it my setup. Unless it doesn't work, and then I can call it something else. And you see the, the wind has died down and, the, and it's switching around to the south now. So this is one of my luxuries, this mat. A ground sheet would be a little bit lighter. But I like it because it feels homely. It just feels like it's worth that extra little bit of weight to carry in. It's also quite bulky. So this is my bivy bag which I'm going to use tonight because I just don't want to run the risk that something goes wrong in the night. I don't have a tent with me because I only have this tarp. I just want to make sure, you know, if something was to go really wrong, I want to make sure I'm safe and that all my gear is dry. So 
I'm sure I'll be fine under the tarp, but I have the bivy bag anyway. And then if I'm sleeping in the night and there's snow drift or rain coming through, I'm not going to get wet. I love these little compression sacks. They're really good for just compressing everything down so you can fit more things in your pack. Oh, you know what? I only got halfway through my cup of tea. I decided to make haste and get the um, shelter set up, so I stopped halfway through my cup of tea. And what's the bet? This is still warm. It's been sitting out here in the wind and snow and is still warm. Mm. This is another one of my luxury items. This cup's quite big and probably a little bit heavier than something like a sil silicon or like a plastic cup. But so worth it because you can have that hot drink on the go for ages. Mm. Mm. Yum. So I've got a new mat today. I've got two mats. <laughs> well, I borrow one of my husband's, so I've only got one. Um, the mat that I have got, the Xbed Sin mat, is only rated with an R value of 3. And that R value, what they do is they put the mat between two metal plates. And the one at the bottom is cold. And I believe what they do is they look to see how quickly or how much of the cold makes its way through the mat to the top plate. So they can detect the heat, uh, not heat loss, uh, the cold, how much cold is actually coming through. And that's the R value. That was probably a bit of a, uh, <laughs> an amateur way of describing it. But anyway, if you wonder what the R value is, that's what it's talking about. It's talking about like the relative warmth of that mat. So a mat with an R value of three is really designed for summer and maybe just, you know, just into spring and autumn. Well, the end of spring and autumn, but it's certainly not designed for winter. So an R value of eight or more is deemed to be a winter uh, mat. Um, this one here from Flextail has an R value of 5. So my other mat, which is it's also Xbed, it's a down mat, it's really heavy and big. I'll show you a photo of the three next to each other. One's really small, low R value. This one's right in the middle and then my down mat is really big and bulky but it's got an R value of 8.2 I think. So this one sits right in the middle. Sits in the middle with weight, sits in the middle with size, sits in the middle with R value. And that's what I want. I want something that can handle a little bit of cold like this, but not the middle of winter. In the middle of winter, I'm happy to take my down mat. I will sacrifice the uh, weight and size for that absolute security. So you'll be really uncomfortable on your mat if you've got too much air in it. What you want, try not to get it dirty, is you want to sink into it so that the boniest part of your body is just a little bit off the ground. You don't want it to touch the ground, but you want to be able to be like mostly like this on the mat and then on underneath your boniest uh, prominence, like probably about that, so that you're sinking into it.
nice. Fantastic. Okay, the plan now is I'm just going to move my pack up here, get out some of my um, food things. That way I can zip my pack up and kind of put it out of the way. And then I'm going to go and get some wood for a fire because considering the conditions, I think it is very safe to have a fire and very necessary because it's cold. I really need one for warmth. the ends of the branches that I collected when I was cutting those two um, sticks at the top. I'm going to go and venture further afield now and see what else I can find. There's plenty of wood here actually. It just might not be particularly hot burning. Hmm. But I have a secret weapon with me. When it's going to be freezing cold and I'm really reliant on a fire for warmth, I don't take the risk of hoping that I'm going to find firewood. I've brought a few pieces with me, not enough to sustain a long burning fire, but enough that if I was desperate, I think I've got three pieces of firewood. And yes, I carried them all the way here. So what? Oh, I'm so glad I did. That little bit of extra weight. It's just really worth the peace of mind. And that's the toss-up. You know, I was talking before about the toss-up between weight and bulk, safety, security. You have to work that out. And when you know that it's going to be snowing, minus three degrees, it's not a time to take risks. So, I've got some nice big pieces of pine, three of them. But I want to go and collect a little bit more firewood because I think first thing in the morning I'm going to light the fire again it is going to be the coldest is going to be first thing in the morning not tonight so I need enough firewood for tomorrow oh. so I wasn't able to find any nice dead trees just branches dead branches on living trees so Fingers crossed it's good enough. The ends of them are quite rotten. Like that. Just completely rotten. Isn't going to provide any heat. You've got to take what you can get in the New Zealand forest. So don't you be coming to New Zealand thinking you're going to light a fire easily perhaps I'm setting a challenge for you but it's it is quite a, a mission I have to say right I'm going to process this wood and um, then before I get the fire started, let's go down and get some water while we still can. <laughs> what I mean by that is it's getting snowier and snowier and wetter and wetter underfoot. So um, I'll go and fill up my drink bottle and... Hmm. I don't think I'll fill up the billy because I'm going to need the billy for cooking dinner. I'll just go and fill up the, the water bottle.
I've created a bit of, well, I'd love to say dry, but I've created a bit of kindling underneath the fire lighters and newspaper. The idea being that as the fire takes hold, the embers drop down and ignite that uh, kindling. This firebox is that I can move it around and that's why I brought it with me because if the wind changes I want to be able to move it and um, I want to be able to have it close enough to me that I can really feel the warmth of it and sometimes when you set up a fire pit you've, well, you've got to set it up outside of the top so you don't melt it but then sometimes it's just so far away you don't really feel the heat so that was my reasoning, along with the fact that I just feel like, I mean, look, the chances of setting fire to the bush in this weather are just negligible. But all the same, I still feel that considering we're not that far out of summer, we're only part way into autumn, it's prudent to be cautious with lighting fires. This way it's off the ground, I can manage it more easily.
Wow, the non-stick on this pot is fantastic. Dinner tonight is North African shakshuka and I'm a little bit sad because I um, put aside two eggs to poach in here. Absolutely amazing with poached eggs. But I left them behind. Ah uh, well. I have a little treat for after dinner. It's hazelnut liqueur. Hmm. I'm just thinking that if the clouds clear any more, what we might do is let the fire burn right down. So there's no risk of anything rolling out. And then go for a little walk. See if we can get to the saddle and look west. Get the sunset. So, what do you think of this trip? If you're still watching, I'm thinking you're enjoying it. So I haven't brought a lot, which is just as well because it's about 20% alcohol. Just a little bit. I'll see how I go. If it's too much, I can put some back. It's not much there. Cheers! <laughs> oh, thank you so much for coming with me. It really means the world to me. It's so fantastic to have you guys along. I, I don't feel like I'm out here on my own. It's lovely to be able to share these journeys with people. This is just too good to keep to myself. I was just thinking what a wild ride this is. All these trips and filming them for YouTube and watching the channel grow and all the challenges that comes with putting together the content and I was just thinking how grateful I am I'm grateful for for a few things firstly I'm so grateful to have you guys along for the ride I'm really grateful for you guys because you watch these videos, you click the like button, share them with other people. I love to hear that you've shared the video with someone else. So if there's somebody that you think, oh, actually
actually, they'd really enjoy that. Share the video with them. I really appreciate it when you guys take the time to um, leave a comment. You'll notice that I go to the effort of answering all of the comments and I can do that when my channel's quite small. So um, long may that last. Not that my channel stays small. <laughs> I'd like it to grow. But long may I be able to answer all the comments. So if you'd like to stop by and say hi, leave a comment for me. Let me know what you thought of the trip. Um, yeah, I'd love to know what part you, you enjoyed the most. I want to say a very special thank you to my Buy Me A Coffee members. I haven't activated YouTube membership yet, I'm going to do that when I get to 10,000 subscribers. But I do have members on Buy Me A Coffee, so if you're interested in becoming a member on Buy Me A Coffee, jump on to buy me a coffee and check that out. There's some little perks in, um, in doing that. Um, thank you so much to everybody who gives me a little bit of money on buy me a coffee and on YouTube super thanks. I really really appreciate that so much because the ad revenue that I get from YouTube it's really it's nice to get but it, it barely covers the costs. It's the YouTube super thanks and the buy me a coffee that actually helps me to be able to buy new gear to grow the channel um, and to <laughs> hope to make a living out of it. <laughs> right, all you fantastic people, I'm going to say Am I going to say goodnight? I don't think I'll say goodnight just yet. I'm just going to say farewell because I'm going to go and do a few things. A few camp chores. And I'll catch up with you when I'm hopping into bed. It's gone. <laughs> Here's me saying, if it's too much, I'll put some back. No. <laughs> Not too much. That actually was perfect.
morning. Oh, it is cold. <laughs> In case you couldn't tell. I've got coffee brewing. Fire's going nicely. It was touch and go as to whether I'd get it started, but I did. And um, my water was partly frozen, but I managed to get it out of the bottle. I'm going to go and get some more water. And I think I'm just going to go down here to the closest town. So I'll see what the condition of these ones is like. They basically look frozen though. My feet are freezing. <sighs> right, it's time for coffee and then I'm going to put some water on for my porridge because I really want to get a nice hearty warm breakfast into me. <sighs> right, so last night, last night was cold. It's very cold. It was a warm mat. I was very pleasantly surprised. Uh, there's no um, insulation because it's got this um, lovely insulation inside the tubes but there's none on the outside because it's um, a tapered mat so you don't have a, a full, what do you call it, like a, I don't know if called a baffle but the, the, the length of the the tube down the side of the mat isn't complete because it tapers at the end and so there's no um, insulation in those two uh, tubes on the outside so if you do roll across to that side you notice it and that was really interesting because when I did kind of roll this way or that way I was like oh that's interesting that's really cold so that insulation that's in the main part of the mat does a really good job and it might be a reason to get the one that isn't tapered so that you can get that insulation across the whole thing. So that mat, I'm not sure if it's got a special name, <laughs> um, but it's by Flextail, so the same people that make the pump. So you can check that out if you're interested in that mat, check it out. Um, I'll put a link in the description for 
the fire maple gear that I use and the flex tail um, gear and I only accept things to try if I really genuinely think I want that product so I'm not interested in just accumulating a whole lot of stuff that's not my style I prefer to have less gear and for it to be good quality that I'm going to use and use so if I am trying something it's because I genuinely think that it's going to work for me and it may or may not I'll let you know um, what I think but um, yes yeah, so far the flex tail pump is the absolute winner <laughs> did you see the way that it just stoked that fire uh oh don't burn your porridge oh good old non-stick it had caught on but I've just given it a stir and it's it's perfect you know what it is so beautiful out there you don't need to sit and watch me eating breakfast I think I'm just going to eat my breakfast and then what I'm going to do is get everything packed up and let's get back on the track because I want to show you some of the view as we walk out I think that is the best use of the camera battery <laughs> the SD card uh, and your time check out this beautiful place. Just when you think a trip can't get any better, the best thing just happened. I just met my first subscriber. Not as in the very first person who ever subscribed. I know who that person is. <laughs> but um, it's the first time I've met someone who subscribes to Adventure OT while I've been out on a trip. So I won't embarrass you but shouting you out with your name. <laughs> but you know who you are. And uh, she was out with two girlfriends, one of whom I happen to know so shout out to all three of you awesome ladies I hope you had a fantastic trip out and I uh, got to enjoy a little bit of that snow that I was in last night we're just coming up on the car 24 hours after we left man we've packed a lot into 24 hours thank you so much for joining me on this trip I had an amazing time and I really hope that you guys did as well. Thanks once again to my fabulous supporters on Buy Me A Coffee and YouTube. Super thanks. Um, I'll put some links uh, for you if you're interested in taking a look at my Buy Me A Coffee membership. Um, thank you for all the wonderful comments. Thank you for liking the video. If you're not subscribed, make sure that you subscribe because there's more to come. I look forward to seeing you guys on the next journey. Take care. Have a great day. Bye.